And after a year, welcome back to the RB25 S14 build series. It's been a long time coming. Um, and I do owe you guys a bit of an explanation on what's been happening behind the scenes, even though on Instagram, I do try to cover as much as I can behind the scenes stuff. But yeah, it's just been neglected. It's been collecting dust, unfortunately. And I've made a lot of mistakes that we're gonna go through today. And this is episode 10 where things really do take another direction and another pathway for this car. And today we're gonna to explain pretty much everything. So the first update and change with the car in the build series, it's gone from an RB25 S14 Silvia build series to the broken Silvia, as the name is definitely a lot more fitting because, <sighs> yep, we've gone back to the SR20. Now, before I get to explaining why I went back to the SR20, let's have a quick look at what happened in episode nine. So episode nine was a really exciting moment for me because I actually got to take the car out of the workshop after about 12 months of trying to restore it to the best of my ability. The car came in with a running SR20. I pretty much stripped the whole car, you know, I repainted it prior to that, um, but pretty much everything was changed except the interior. And before that, I had no experience. I pretty much painted maybe two sets of wheels, installed coilovers and another few little jobs. Like to tackle something like this and to actually put it back together, make it way better than what it was and for it to roll out and take home was such a great sense of achievement for me. And yeah, it was a very exciting moment, I'm not gonna lie. But then more time went by and this is where kind of the problem was. I was told, you know, by older guys, but you never listen to anyone, or at least I don't because I'm freaking stubborn. Um, and they were saying, don't have two project cars at once. It's a stupid idea. Now, especially if they say it's a stupid idea and they can fund it with full-time jobs, you can imagine what it's like for someone with a part-time job. It's a stupid idea. But anyways, I did it. So I was torn between which one gets more time and money put into it, the Skyline or the Sylvia. Now the Skyline is really what I wanted, but the Sylvia was so close to being done. All it needed pretty much was a wiring harness at an ECU and another few bits and pieces but even more time went by. The Skyline was doing really good on YouTube. Um, I enjoyed the build and I started seeing something that I really always wanted start to take shape. And the Sylvia just kept getting neglected, more dust fell on the car. Um, and then I just got to a point where I was like, you know what, I can't, can't do this anymore. And if you look around the workshop, oh, sorry. Look around the workshop and tell me how many of these cars actually run. Excuse the mess. None. They're all broken. Now, for some people, they prefer rebuilding the cars over driving them. But for me, the reason I build them or try to rebuild them is so I can drive them. I, you know, the rebuild process is fun to an extent. But after that, I really just want to drive the car. And the big mistake or problem for me was I was more concentrated on what parts were on the car than actually getting this car to drive and enjoying it for what it is. I painted it the color I wanted. I had the engine in it I wanted. I had the wheels that I wanted. Pretty much if S14 was a dream car, this, is, this would have been my dream spec S14 Silvia. But I still wasn't happy with it. The more things I put on it, the less happy with it I became. And I really started thinking of why is this happening? And then I always get asked on Instagram, what is the best car, your favorite car you've ever owned? Now, everybody would say the R34, the S14, but it's none of them. Like, sure, the R34 is a dream car, but it was actually a BMW E30. And to those that know what a BMW E30 is, it's pretty much a brick with four wheels on it and a 1.8 liter motor strapped to it in my case. The car cost me close to nothing. I didn't have to put a spanner to it. I polished it up and I enjoyed every moment of it. I went to the hills, I went out, I went to uni, I daily drove it. I had it for about three months and yeah, did not, did not skip a beat and you know flooring it everywhere driving it to the max and you're still not breaking the speed limit was the most enjoyable part of this car so that's kind of the problem is the parts overthinking it and not actually enjoying the car for what it is and I gave myself two options either you go through with all these fancy parts and get to a point where you just don't want to know about the car anymore or you take everything apart and simplify it. And the second option is exactly what I did.
So you're watching this video and I know exactly what you're thinking. This guy's an absolute nutter for taking apart all the hard work that went into the car. But do take in consideration that the SR20 that I bought the car with when I sold that first drivetrain off, I got really, really good money for. And then the whole RB swap, which included the turbo kit, the engine, the RB26 valve covers, the gearbox and all that cost me less money than what I sold just the RB25 Neo for about a year or two later. Because all of a sudden, all these Jap cars and Jap car parts, they just went right through the roof in prices. So it really did work in my favor when I sold the RB swap off. Because I ended up with a drivetrain to put into this car to make it running. And I ended up with a fair bit of money to put into the blue car to continue that build. So as much as it could have been kind of sad, it was very exciting at the same time. And now to the story of how I ended up with this exact SR20 swap. So about a year ago, my parents were building a house and the apprentice that was doing most of the cabling in the house had to go into the garage for some reason. And obviously this was at home at the time and it had no bonnet on. And I was at work and mum goes, oh, there was someone that was really liking the car. They asked a few questions and she just remembered the letters RB. Thought nothing of it, some time went by, I put everything up for sale, the entire drivetrain. And I got a message from um, Adam, he was like, Hey man, my cousin wants to do a swap into his S14. I was like, yep, yeah, come by, we'll have a chat on how I think he should do it, uh, make his life a little bit easier. And after about an hour of talking, we ended up coming to a deal where he pretty much took the turbo kit and another few little bits and bobs, and I ended up with the entire drivetrain out of his car. So then, about a week later, we pick up his black S14 Sylvia, and my friend from high school, Preston, helped me pull out um, the entire swap. And you're gonna be seeing a lot of Preston around because he did a lot of the work on this red S14 to get it um, running again. And going back to the whole Facebook thing, people ask me, how do I find these cheap cars, cheap parts? Facebook, man, there's plenty of Facebook groups in your local area, Jap car parts or whatever they might be called in the country you're in. But yeah, people are always willing to trade, swap, try new things. So yeah, that's how I found this car and also that car over there. So do keep an eye out on Facebook because there are always good deals popping, popping up. So this was a bit of a different video, different format, explaining what went on behind the scenes. Let me know how it went, what we can improve on as always. And the next video, we're getting back stuck into work with a bit of, bit of music, bit of voiceovers and we'll see you soon. Oh, and by the way, yeah, we'll get to this.